Hey everybody and welcome back to Teach Me to Code. This is Charles Maxwood and this week I'm actually going to give you a short demonstration of kind of the basics of the Rack library for Ruby. Um, before I get started I really want to point out that uh, part of the reason that I'm doing this is I'm actually going to be giving a presentation at the Ruby web conference at the Snowbird Resort in Utah um, here on the 9th and 10th of September and so I highly recommend that you you know, if you want to come out, uh, meet up with me, get to know me a little bit better, or learn about Rack and some other really cool web technologies, that you go to rubywebconf.org and sign up. And I'll go ahead and I'll, I'll have a little bit more information here at the end. Um, but anyway, so we're just going to go ahead and jump in and get started. Now, as you can see here, we have a rackdemo.ru file that I'm going to be editing. The ru file is a rackup file and you'll see me run rack up in a minute but basically this is the core file for rack so anyway you can see here that basically um, all we have to do is we call run and we call it on a proc in this case but really the the core is that uh, you can call run on anything that responds to dot call and a proc does you can also use a lambda you can define a class or an object and then define a method on that class or object that uh, resp that is called call and uh, takes one um, one argument so here what we're doing is we're actually just going to show what that one argument is by inspecting it and basically um, we're going to do that by giving it a, a status of 200 and if you're familiar with the HTTP uh, specification, then you'll know that 200 is a successful response. Um, we're going to give it a header, which is the content type uh, text HTML, um, and that's just for convenience with the browser. And then the last part is the body, and uh, so that's uh, that's where your HTML markup would go. So let's go ahead and get a uh, command prompt up. And what we'll do is we'll run rack up and then we put in our rack file and then minus P specifies the port that we're going to hit in order to uh, run it. Um, and then we just come over to our web browser. We go to localhost 3000 and there you can see that we have um, what is passed in. Now what it is, is it's actually a hash and it has a whole bunch of information about the HTTP request. So, you know, it has the host, it has the path, it has all the parameters that are passed in, and, and you can kind of see from this, you know, where other web frameworks like Rails and stuff get their information out of it. Now, what we're going to go ahead and do here is we're going to do something a little bit different. Um, we're actually going to set the body so that it returns um, something from the... Uh, request path and the request path is usually like slash index or something like that in, in this case what we're gonna do is we're gonna sub off the um, we're gonna g sub out any slashes any forward slashes in the path and then what we're gonna go ahead and do is just return that so you know if we come down here we'll just stop and start rack real quick um, and then when we get there, you'll see that, you know, if we go to uh, localhost 3000 slash 2, for example, that it'll just output 2. So let's just do that real quick. And you can see, there we go, we have a 2. Now, you know, this is kind of simple, kind of uh, boring, contrived example, but there are some really powerful things that you can do with, with Rack. Um, and what we're going to do is we're actually going to generate some middleware. Um, if you've dealt with Rack before, you're probably familiar with the concept of middleware. But basically, the idea with middleware is it's something that um, is called on the way into or out of your application. So it's either it's called before and after, actually. Um, it and basically what it does there is it. Uh, and and let's go ahead and switch this over to Ruby real quick so that we get the syntax highlighting. 
but basically you know it gets called on the way into your application on the way back out to out of your application and uh, from there what we can do is we can actually modify this and this environment this uh, information about the request so in this case what we're gonna do is we're actually going to tell it to just pass the information through um, and, and collect the response on the way back out and so you can see we're getting status header and body and if you look at that proc you know you can see the status the header and the body so that's what we're looking for and then when we return in this case all we're gonna do is we're gonna modify the body and we're gonna um, convert the body to an integer multiply it by two that's why we called it doubler and then we're going to convert it back to a string. Now the reason we're converting it back to a string is that the body has to be an object that responds to the square braces. In other words, you have to be able to index into it. And a string you can do that, but an integer you can't. You can't call square braces on it. And then we'll just put in use doubler and uh, we'll get that uh, middleware started. And then from there what we can do is we can actually go in and we can um, start up the rack application again. All right, so here we go, and you can see now that it's giving us four. So if we put in a a dot two i is zero, so a converted to an integer is zero zero times two is zero. So anyway, that that kind of gives you an idea of what we're dealing with here put in 10 you get 20 um, you know you, it, it's it's pretty self-explanatory what we've done here now as I mentioned before you can create middleware that not only uh, intercepts the response and modifies it but you can also in intercept the, um, the request and modify the request so let's go ahead and call this before doubler and here what we'll do is uh, um, we want to call app call we want to call call on app after we've modified the header so you just do an end we're going to modify the request header or the request path so uh, let's just go ahead and uh, put that in and uh, I'm just going to do the same thing that I'm doing in the doubler so we'll we'll get the request path um, we'll g sub out all of the forward slashes and then we'll double it and then we'll just uh, send it on through. And obviously, we need a forward slash on that, so we'll go ahead and put that in. alright so then we'll put in use and these are actually triggered in the order that they're uh, called there so before doubler will get called and then doubler will get called in this case it doesn't matter but sometimes it really does for example if you're modifying the, the request twice that makes a difference so then if we come in here and we can refresh that you can see now that the response is 40 um, and since we're g-subbing out um, all of the forward slashes we can actually do 10 slash o o o slash o o which is like 10 million and you can see there we're getting 40 million so anyway that's the basics of rack so uh, anyway uh, I'm, I'm probably going to be doing a few things later with rack but in the meantime you know feel free to uh, hop in and check it out thanks new relic is the leading provider of application performance management tools for ruby and java applications Thousands of companies use New Relic RPM to monitor, troubleshoot, and optimize applications deployed either in the cloud or in dedicated hosting environments. RPM Lite is free, fully supported, unlimited time version available at www.newrelic.com. All the leading Rails companies use New Relic including 37 Signals, AT&T Interactive, Shopify, OurStage, IGN, and lots more. This episode is sponsored by Jumpstart Lab. Jumpstart Lab offers private and corporate training in Ruby, Rails, and related technologies. They're experienced educators, not just good developers, and will get you going quickly. Courses can be scheduled in the U.S. or around the world and curriculum customized to meet your needs. Learn more at jumpstartlab.com. 
Hey everybody, this is Charles Maxwood, and I just want to let you all know that uh, on September 9th and 10th, I'm going to be speaking at the Ruby Web Conference. If you use or are interested in learning about web technologies, or you just want to come and meet up with other like-minded Rubyists, this is a great conference to go to. If you go to rubywebconf.org and click register and use the teach me code, that's T-E-A-C-H-M-E, -E, all one word, um, you'll get a $30 discount for the conference. It's going to be held up at Snowbird. Uh, that's a resort here in Utah. And uh, again, that'll be on September 9th and 10th. So come out and uh, I'm looking forward to meet you. That was wonderful. Bravo. I loved that. Oh, it was great. Well, it was pretty good. Well, it wasn't bad. Well, there were parts of it that weren't very good, it though. It could have been a lot better. I didn't really like it. It was pretty terrible. It was bad. It was awful. It was terrible. Get him away. Hey, boo. Boo.